last one. It's not really, I want to talk about galvanostats. This is not exactly a galvanostat like you would find in a circuit, but what it is is a current source, and basically that's all a, current, a galvanostat is, is a current source. And so rather than having a constant potential, we want a constant current. <clears throat> and I want to show you this circuit. And basically, in this circuit, there is a switch. And I just want to show you, if the switch was in this position, what you'd see what would happen. Current source, and these two linked rings is a, is a is a symbol for a current source in electronics. The current will flow through our electrode to the auxiliary electrode, or vice versa, auxiliary electrode through the working electrode, whatever the current uh, source happens to be. So that's all a galvanostat is. It's just a current source that we can switch on and off as we need, and we want to say perhaps switch the polarity of the current source. So, so perhaps the current flows this way, or perhaps the current flows the other way uh, in the circuit. Also, a galvanostat usually has a separate uh, part of the circuit, and that would be the reference electrode. And you, what you do is have on the galvanostat simply an electrometer or a voltage reference device that would measure the potential between the reference electrode and the working electrode. Because the potential is measured there, it actually has, the reference electrode actually does not have to be part of the circuit. It's not required. You're not using the reference electrode for anything except as a, a point to measure the potential of the working electrode. So in some cases, you don't need a reference electrode if you just want to apply a current through the system, say to do a bulk electrolysis. Uh, but in some cases, you might want to use a, the potential measurement in case you want to do chronal potentiometry and measure the potential as a function of current. So here's a current source, in fact, one I built for the lab, and you can see this has actually got pretty much everything you need on there, and so it's much more complicated because we've got all the extra pieces that normally we're not showing. It's still pretty simple compared to most circuits. Does that focus okay? Or? Yeah. I want you to ignore a lot of this. These are switches here. These, they're relays. They're just electromechanical switches. So just all, whenever you see these blocks, they're just relays. It's run by, the current source is run by batteries. Um, and what you have here is a, uh, a device here which supplies a constant voltage here. And then it runs into a variable resistor. So you have this, by turning a knob, we can get any value of voltage across this resistor from one volt to zero volts versus common. And that runs into a, uh, the non-inverting input of our op amp here. And here you can see the, the voltage supplies are shown on our op amp. And here we see a um, a switch to turn that either the current running through uh, something or through that point there. That's a little complicated. And then there's a set of resistors that can be changed all the way up from one giga ohm, which gives us one nanoamp of full scale, to one milliamp of full scale. Now the rest of it I'm not going to show, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this. And you can see the sort of the essentials of it without having to look at all the shrubbery around it. So what we have here is one volt. And we have a variable resistor, which, so here we have this as a voltage divider. And that gives us one volt when the pointer is over here and zero volts when it's over here. That's going into, the non-inverting input of our system. The switch is an essential, so the current will be flowing here. Uh, at this point, we will have a resistor which we can change. 
image. And then we have a switch, which I'm not going to eliminate because all that switch does is change the direction of the current flow either towards the current source or away from the current source. And then we have a, um, a load. Notice there is, um, notice on this circuit there is two parts of the circuit. The switch either makes the current flow directly to the auxiliary electrode and to the working electrode here, or we can switch it so that the current flows first to the working electrode and then to the auxiliary electrode. It either flows this way or it flows this way through the circuit, either way. But what's happening is that, that these two are going to the working and the auxiliary electrode. And essentially then, what we have is a load. And the load is our electrochemical cell. So one side may be the working electrode and one side may be the auxiliary electrode or vice versa. Okay, so that's, our, that's all that circuit is when we draw it in a very simplified way. So what's happening? Well, the current is flowing through the load to, through this resistor to ground. Remember, we need to have, and we'll call this our load, and let's call this one our gain. Remember how this is going to work. We need to make sure that these two inputs are the same voltage. So let's suppose our input here is one volt. So Vn, V here, let's call it Vx. Vx is equal to one volt. And let's make Rg equal to one megaohm, or 10 to the sixth ohms. So what's going to happen to our current here? What kind of current we're going to, are we going to see at the load? Well, remember, V, uh, let's call it V2. V2 has to be equal to Vx. And so our load and our gain make a voltage divider circuit, right? Voltage will have to flow through here. And we're measuring essentially V2 with respect to uh, Rg. So we're measuring the voltage V2 here is the voltage that's going to be developed. So essentially we can think of V out here is going to be equal to um, oh, I'm sorry, V2 is going to be equal to V out times Rg over RL plus Rg. And this is simply a voltage divider. We can go back and I can show you that. Remember here, this is all we've got in the system. So same idea. So V2, the point, the voltage at point two is going to be go V out, whatever V out is. We don't have that decided yet, but V out over RG over RL plus RG. And um, the current that flows through the load is going to be equal to, I is going to be equal to um, V out minus V2. It's going to be equal to I RL. So I is going to be equal to V out minus V2 over RL. Now we can substitute in what uh, V2 is. So I is going to be equal to V out minus V out RG over RL plus RG. It's getting a little complicated, but oops. So 
I is going to be equal to V out 1 minus RG over RL plus RG over RL. Now let's see if we can figure out what we need to do. Um, Actually, we wanted to do this a little differently, I think. Um, I, could, uh, uh, I'm not, I guess I'm, we're getting too far into it, but essentially what you have to do is you have to solve for V2, I think, not V out. So we'll solve for V2, which happens to be equal to Vx as what we've, we've, we've put out. Essentially, the current that we get is going to be equal to Vx times Rg. And so that's the current that's going to flow through it. So whatever we adjust the value here, we'll see uh, some from 1 volt to 0 will be our scaling factor. And Rg is going to be the gain scale, essentially, from what setting to what. So we can have decade changes in resistors and get a whole spanning range of those two. And uh, like I said, all you have to do is solve for uh, V2 or Vx, which are essentially the same thing to get the, get the right number. And I, I started out badly, but I'm wasted enough time already. And you can see how we did that in the actual circuit. We've um, supplied the current here, and we use um, these range switch to select those different values of Rg. So one gig ohm would give us one nanoamp full scale for one volt here and so on. The galvanostat would work exactly the same way. The current source would look maybe a little different if you had very high current outputs were required. But for intermediate currents, you could do this. Also, that, but there actually there is a large number of different current sources available to shoot from. So a lot of them use uh, a more probably a more inexpensive way of using transistors. But this one actually is a very precise circuit and we can do picoamp levels of current output without too much trouble. Pretty much all the other galvanostats that you buy commercially are talking about milliamps and microamps of current being supplied. And uh, this one gets you down to the picoamps and that's one of the reasons I was using that. Okay. All right. How are we on time, Rob? All right. As we do, I guess in that case, we'll close by just pointing out some of the some of the difficulties that we can run into. As I said, whenever we have these tension stacks, you can have some problems with the uh, compliance voltage. Remember, we have to have enough current. Uh, current at the outputs to supply what we require. We also have to have enough voltage at the outputs to give us the voltage that we need as well. Now we haven't talked about some of the other parts of the, uh, the whole package. For example, how we take the voltage output that we get from the potential stat that, and convert it to a signal that the computer can use and so on and, and that is certainly an important part of the system but we can't, we just don't have enough time. We need a whole uh, a couple weeks probably to cover all those little aspects of it. Now this will get you started uh, by looking at it in the in the manual. Let's see. Well, why don't we um, stop here then, and we'll for the another little break and put a new tape in.